over the last few months due to the current climate that we're living in, people really see skincare more like self-care, which I absolutely welcome. It's that 60 seconds in the morning of escapism where you might massage your face and take that time to kind of just breathe and close the bathroom door and just have those few moments of, of time for yourself. I'm a fan of SPF, like you need to protect your skin 365 days of the year, hail, rain, snow, inside and out. So probably SPF is an absolute given for me because you're shielding your skin, your skin is an organ. But if I'm allowed to creep in a few others, I would say vitamin A, it's a game changer. Vitamin C, we don't make it as humans. It has a huge impact on redness and collagen and just general skin health. And I'd probably sprinkle in hyaluronic acid as well. So I cheated, I gave you four, but they all do work together to create one skin health. Definitely it's an honour, it's an absolute honour to know that people wanted a second book to be written. To be asked to write a second book is a privilege, there's no doubt about it. I loved researching and compiling the technology, the innovation, the key ingredients that have changed since book number one. So it's not necessary to encourage people to become frenzied into buying more, quite the opposite, but to become empowered to know what you have at home, to enlighten you as to what to do, and then to educate you overall as to what is available in the skincare sector. So for example, we've interviewed psychologists, psychodermatologists, dietitians, nutrition, nutrition, gym, ultimately are experts in their own field and trying to encourage them to explain how what they do has an impact on skincare. So this is almost like your one-stop guide to know this sector, the humans behind it, the ingredients that you need and hopefully enjoy it. It's like a reference guide. You don't need to read a cover to cover. You can pick pieces in and out as you might need it over the next 10, 20, 30 years. I've been really fortunate to make my hobby my passion and it's now my career. Whether I've taught, whether I've formulated my own product, whether it is writing the book, it's always been about the topic of skin. So since I was a child, it's been skincare in some shape or form. I don't believe it just should be men. I think everybody should look at their skin as an organ. I think we're forgiven for thinking that it's an accessory that we perhaps put tan on or exfoliate or put makeup on, for example, but we don't always look at the ingredients or how we're treating it. It is the organ that defends us from the elements, from everything. It's just about skin health. So yes, and everybody else should do. Oh, that's a really tough one. Sleep or water? I would say sleep and then eat fish, nuts, seeds, and essential fatty acids. They're really important for skin health. Water is obviously vital for our existence. However, it gets a little bit too much attention. If you're not eating the correct fats in your diet, you don't have the ability to retain the water. So I'd start further down. I'd start with my, my breakfast, my lunch, my dinner, and get that into my, my every single day. All of it has a lot to do with how you are, and then in turn, how your skin is, and then ultimately how you feel in your own skin. They're all part and parcel of the same thing. Sugar is probably my answer, simply because I do believe that sugar is, it's, it's, ugh, it's unbelievable for inflammation, like it's such a massive culprit in it. And when I look at skincare accelerated aging, that's an awful lot, typically down to inflammatory foods within the diet, psoriasis, eczema, acne, rosacea, an awful lot of the skin conditions that we'd hear about on a day in day basis are triggered by sugaring within the skin. Plus there's sugar and alcohol, so I've kind of cheated by saying both together, to be fair. Supplementation for me is exactly like your Sunday paper. So you get your paper, you get your supplement, it's in addition to, it's not a replacement as such. Please do eat well, please do mind yourself, but arguably at times it's quite hard to get vitamin D in your diet, check with your doctor if you need it. it can be really hard to get a lot of vitamin C to have an impact on your skin. Understandably, yes, your skin is an organ, but all the other vital organs will consume what they need and then your skin potentially gets a little bit less than what we would want. I suppose dig into the research and proof is in the pudding. Take a photograph on day one, take a photograph a month later and start to see little differences in your skin and then you're moving the right way. This feature is brought to you by Creative Ireland in partnership with RTE Supporting the Arts. Supporting artists. Supporting us.